Well, according to the rules of the International Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, or OPCW, if any state believes that another country might have used chemical weapons, it has to provide all the necessary evidence within 10 days after the request. Well, experts we spoke to believe it's not Russia, but rather the UK, which has broken the rules. The OPCW has got set procedures in place that need to be followed through with this, and those are not being followed. Uh, um, those procedures of investigation and, and formal steps are not being followed. And from my understanding, Russia has offered to jointly cooperate, but, but they would like a formal request and they would like uh, samples in order to do the analysis, which makes complete sense to me. And why wouldn't you want to cooperate together? Sometimes if you're trying to hide something or to shift the narrative in a certain direction, maybe you don't want to cooperate. It's unfortunate, but I, I, I do not think this looks very professional of, uh, of the UK. And Yeah, they're not following the conventions. You've got set procedures in place and they're just not being followed. Uh, it's kind of a complete disregard to the international uh, rule of law or rule of agreements that, that are in place. Well, the UN Security Council meeting comes after allegations from Britain's Prime Minister Theresa May on Russia's alleged involvement in the poisoning of former spy Sergei Skripal and his daughter. May claims that a Soviet-era nerve agent was used in the attack and announced reprisal moves against Moscow. They include the expulsion of 23 diplomats, the suspension of all high-level contact and revoking an invitation for the Russian Foreign Minister to visit Britain. Theresa May also announced an updated sanctions bill against Moscow and that MPs and members of the royal family will not attend the Football World Cup to be held in Russia this summer. Mr Speaker, it was right to offer Russia the opportunity to provide an explanation. But their response has demonstrated complete disdain for the gravity of these events. They have provided no credible explanation that, they, that could suggest they lost control of their nerve agent. No explanation as to how this agent came to be used in the United Kingdom. No explanation as to why Russia has an undeclared chemical weapons programme in contravention of international law. Well, in response, Moscow has called the UK's measures a crude provocation and announced that there would be countermeasures. The UK now says it has damning evidence of Russia's guilt and will submit it to the OPCW. The investigation into the attack on the former Russian intelligence agent and his daughter is still ongoing, and there are still many unanswered questions. As RT's Daniel Hawkins looks into. An attack by the Kremlin on UK soil. For Downing Street, it seems the case is all but closed. Russia is the culprit. No questions. Or are there? Has the Prime Minister taken the necessary steps to make a formal request for evidence from the Russian government? Given the gravity of the accusations, an official request seemed like a reasonable ask. But Moscow, though, says no such requests were forthcoming. We haven't received any official request from London. We've told Britain we're ready to respond. If they file the request, instead of filing the official request, the UK continues to pull political stunts. Moscow also said it would cooperate in a joint investigation within OPCW parameters. It seems this offer was unacceptable to the UK government. Has high-resolution trace analysis been run on a sample of the nerve agent? No answers from Theresa May on that. But the Prime Minister believes there's already enough evidence to make it highly likely this was an attack ordered by the Russian state. Guilty as charged. Mr Skripal and his daughter were poisoned with a Novichok, a military-grade nerve agent developed by Russia. Means motive and opportunity are usually needed to prove criminal guilt. The nerve agent Novichok, allegedly used in that attack, was actually developed in the Soviet Union decades ago, and the OPCW officially confirmed that Russia had concluded the destruction of its entire chemical weapons stockpile last year. How has she responded to the Russian government's request for a sample of the agent used in the Salisbury attack to run its own tests? Apparently, no response and no sample. Why the secrecy if this is such an open and shut case? In the mid-1990s, Western Special Services recruited a number of our chemical specialists. Their names are known. 
They also brought some of their documents and continued research in this area, including in the US and the UK. The results achieved by those countries in creating new poisonous substances that, for some reason, are classified under the common name Novichok in the West, are confirmed and represented in more than 200 open sources from NATO countries. We have all the references. We're ready to provide them. With the investigation still in its early stages, other crucial evidence which could point to the perpetrator of this crime is lacking. Has that revealed any evidence as to the location of its production or the identity of its perpetrators? Hundreds of officers, as you would expect, continue to work around the clock, gathering evidence to identify those responsible. We are not declaring a person of interest or a suspect at this time. Qui bono? How does committing a heinous act on foreign soil on the eve of a presidential election and months before the much-discussed World Cup, knowing the diplomatic fallout, benefit the Kremlin. You have to ask one thing. If Russia wanted to kill this man, they could have killed him when he was a prisoner in Russia. Why have they waited this long? And why use a chemical weapon that makes it look definitely as though Russia's behind this? It's very odd to think that the president of Russia is um, sitting in his office deciding who to kill, someone who's no threat any longer, basically now retired in Britain. I would have guessed that uh, uh, Mr Putin's got more important things to do than that. Theresa May says Russia's been given a chance to disprove its guilt until proven innocent. Despite many unanswered questions, the mass expulsion of diplomats, the freeze on high-level talks and tit-for-tat action approaching means the diplomatic damage has already been done and is too late to undo.